What's up? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own character creator in Unreal Engine 4. It's actually really easy to do, way easier than you'd think. It's like the clothing system video, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's one of those things that's a cool, like, difficult concept, but it's really easy to make in practice, which is real cool. So I'm going to include a couple of assets, you'll need to download those, I'll just put them in the description. The first one is this character.fbx file. When you import it, you want to make sure Skeletal Mesh, Import Mesh is checked. And you can pretty much just leave everything as is and click on Import. And then after this, there's one more file as well. There's an animation called Idle because uh, this uses a different rig from the Epic rig. So we need to import this Idle animation. Again, you can just use uh, Character Skeleton and just import it. Now there is one thing that is going to be broken about the character that you've imported. It's just the material, if you open that up. For some reason, I don't know why this happens, but it gets set to translucent. Just set that to opaque, and then save, and your material will now be working. Okay, so the weirdest thing, and I don't know why you need to do this, but if you right-click on character, and then click on re-import, it will give you access to the morph targets for this mesh. For some reason I don't think they import by themselves, or maybe there's like a checkbox that you need to uh, select. But anyways, if you open up the character, you can see all of our morph targets here on the morph target preview. It's kind of a shame, I can only have morph targets for the face, uh, but you can get morph targets for like the arms and the legs and stuff too, if you can make them. So I'll show you an example. You can preview what they look like. So for example, if we look at blink left, if I turn the weight of blink left to one, you can see my character's left eye will be blinking. And then anything between uh, zero and one is going to be some sort of um, interpolation. So 0 0.5 is going to be like sort of in between, like his eye looks all, all derpy now. And uh, I just dropped my mouse on the ground. The next thing to do is just some real simple character setup. If you open up third person character, there is a camera. There's actually a, a camera boom as well, but I got rid of that. So just take your camera and move it over here. Just get it so it's like facing in the direction of the player because we want to get a good view of the face since that's what we're editing. And if you click on mesh, we're going to change that now. So go to mesh, character, and then use animation asset and I just want my character to basically just permanently be idling and that should be good so what I'm gonna do is compile save and hit play and just ensure that it looks okay and to me that looks fine so we can continue on so the next thing to do is to make the user interface because we obviously need some sort of interface right click user interface widget blueprint I'm going to call this WB underscore face editor. So we're going to make a face editor uh, user interface. Okay. So this is going to be a fairly simple thing. I'm going to put a bit of text up the top just to keep stuff fancy. And the main thing that we need is we need a scroll box. So we need a box that holds all of the sliders in it because we're going to make a bunch of sliders in a second. We'll make one slider for each characteristic that can be changed. So uh, drag in your scroll box, call it whatever you want. I think feature editor box is good. And then check the box that says is variable because we need to uh, use it as a variable soon. So that's pretty much it. I uh, won't put it in the center though, I'll put it like there-ish. That'll be fine. And the size X is going to be 450 and 450. And in a second we're going to make a, a different widget that goes inside of this box. So that looks good for now. So the easiest way to put this on the screen, the fastest, quickest way to put it on the screen is just to um, make a begin play event. So just type begin play create widget to actually make the widget and then select face editor and then to put it on the screen you just drag out from here and type add to viewport and that's it and we're gonna set the player controller as the owning player for the user interface so what we're left with is just some UI on the screen if I hit play there you go we have the face editor open 
our box we can't see it it doesn't have anything in it so that's the next step how do we add something to our box okay so to start off I will open up my UI and I like to keep things nice and organized I'm gonna right click and type T and then a dot to make a custom event and we'll call this populate feature box so I'm gonna make this in a way that's real nice for you guys whenever you want to add new morph targets it's gonna be incredibly easy to do that so this is the event that's gonna do that and then on the construct we're gonna populate our feature box with all of the different features that you can change whether that be making the character's nose bigger or smaller or the changing the chin size you know stuff like that so we're gonna take the player controller and we will show the mouse cursor why because we gotta click on stuff so we need to show that thing uh, yep that's good and then we also need to set the input mode so set input mode to UI only so we can't click on any stuff inside of the game you wanna use self as the widget to focus alright so we need to make the thing now that we're gonna put inside of our box so to do that we're gonna make another widget blueprint don't worry we only need two of them I'm gonna call this widget blueprint underscore feature slider so this is gonna be a real simple like slider bar that when you drag it it will modify uh, the feature of the character so we're gonna set the fill screen to custom and we're gonna make it 450 by 50 pixels so we'll drag some text in and you can sort of customize the sizing and stuff yourself I won't worry too much about that but uh, one thing you do need to do is go to the graph and add a couple of new variables so the variables that we need are the feature name text so what are we editing right like this might be this might say something like nose size or lip size or something like that so feature name text and then there's also the morph name this is the actual name of the morph target that we're changing so that needs to be called morph name and it's gonna be a name variable oh and I forgot both of these click the little I thing and also click expose on spawn for both of them all right click on your text block again and then go to bind and uh, properties feature name text so you've now bound the feature name to this text and then we need to make a slider that's also really easy if you type slider up here in the palette you can actually just drag one of them in and I'll just keep the styling real basic but feel free if you're on your own project to make the slider look nice I'm gonna call this feature slider and if you click on on value changed that's where we're gonna be changing the morph target so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take the morph name this is the actual name of the morph target we're changing and we're gonna do two format texts I'll explain why we're doing this in a second So the reason we're doing this is because the morph targets are set up in kind of a weird way they give you a left morph target and a right morph target and I want to edit them both at the same time I don't want to edit them one by one to me that's a little bit silly I don't want to edit the right side of my nose and then the left side I just want to do it all at once so we're gonna take this and make it two text and then plug it in there plug that in there and then finally and this is really annoying me you have to do this but you have to do two string and then you have to do two name why you have to do that I don't know it's kind of dumb but copy that put that there and now we're ready to go so we're gonna get our player character we're gonna take the characters mesh so get mesh we are going to set morph target that's how easy it is no crazy logic you just call that one function and that will set it to whatever you want and obviously we're just setting it to the value of the slider which is even more convenient 
So we're gonna do this one goes into here. And then we just need to basically copy this and do it again. So copy that, paste it, plug that in there, and then plug the value into the slider value, and then just plug that in to there. And that's pretty much it. We now have a slider, and once we set the morph name to a certain target, we'll be able to change the slider, and we'll see our character's face update with it, which is pretty cool. So there's pretty much only like two more things we have to do. The first one is we actually need to populate our feature box, so let me do that. But before we do that, if you open up Face Editor, I'm going to introduce you to something called a map. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have heard of maps. Uh, maybe some of you haven't. So what, we're, what we'll do, go to variables and add a variable, and I'm going to call this morph targets. We're going to make this a name, and it's going to be a map, and it's going to give us some text out. So morph targets, or sorry, uh, maps are essentially like arrays. However, instead of accessing variables using a number, we access them using a key. In this case, the key is going to be a name. So what we'll do is we will take our morph targets, just hold control. And if you type keys, you can get access to all of the keys. And then we're going to loop through our keys. So the keys are going to be all of the morph target names, by the way. So for each morph target that exists in our little map, we're going to create one of our new sliders that we made. So create widget, create feature slider, and it's going to ask for a morph name, which we have right here and then the feature name text. And we can get that by using find and plugging the morph name in like that. And then you can simply plug that in there. The owning player is going to be just the... If you type get owning player, you can just plug that in. And then finally, we're going to add it to our scroll box. So if you click on the feature editor box, hold control, drag it in. And then we simply use add child to add it to the box, like that. So now we've added all of the sliders to our box, but how does this map work? So I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, we can add default values, and that's how we're doing all of this stuff, by the way. So go ahead, click on default values. Now I have a bunch of morph, tar ah, morph targets here that I already know the names of. <clears throat> You'll need to sort of look through and find some good ones, but I'm just going to add a bunch of ones that I already know exist. So one of them is called Cheek Puff. And there's cheek puff underscore left and underscore right. But remember, we account for both of them, left and right. So we just put cheek puff. And now you put what you want to be displayed on the user interface. This is the name of the morph target. And this here is what gets displayed on the user interface. So we're going to put cheek puff. And you can simply just keep adding these keys as you need them. So I'll add some more nose scrunch is one of them. And I'm just going to put nose scrunch. I won't add too many. I don't want to waste too many of you guys' time. Uh, we'll do one of them's called jaw. And for the display text, I'm going to say jaw width. Uh, let's do one more. I'm going to do a smile. If you if you want your character to look super creepy and you want to give him a permanent smile, let's just do that. So add a smile, and then go ahead and type smile for the display name. All right, I have no idea if this is going to work yet. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but let's just wing it, hit play. Cheek puff, let's turn it up, and there you go. That cheek puff is ridiculous. Oh, it doesn't uh, display properly. Let me fix that up for you guys. Open up the feature slider, and all you need to do is just give the text a little bit more room, and maybe like ch change the font a little bit. We'll do like 18. So, hit play, boom, we have a character, we can change his jaw, his smile, all that stuff. Now, if you're making your own game and you have an artist or a modeler working for you, oh my god, that is so creepy. <laughs> That's terrifying. Um, if you have an artist or a modeler working for you and you want a particular feature implemented, just ask him to make you a morph target for it 
and then uh, you can import the morph target and then add it to the screen as you want. So from here, I mean, you could add different categories, different things to model. Um, and I'd even recommend try to combine this with the clothing system and see if you can make a full on character editor. That'd be real cool to see. Anyways, that is it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.